Do you want to wash your hands? Nah, I'll just keep wiping them with this. Wipe them all across all over the place. There's a little one there. I'm going to covet a few of your tools while I'm here. What? You're coveting some? Go ahead. Co covet. Covet. What do you want? You know, like covet thy neighbor's wife. What do you need? No, I, it's not a chick you give me. It's stuff that I'm just envious of. Oh, jeez. That's nice of you. Thanks. Like this freaking... Oh, how about this here? Yeah, oh, you ain't much. seen this? Okay. What do you got there? It's a fucking hydraulic lift. Oh yeah? It will lift up the, your truck in two seconds, about four foot high. Well this thing is like, this thing right here, I'm trying to show people Go online. Ahead. This engine voice right here is like the one I have on steroids. And it's got an air actuated hydraulic cylinder, so you can pump it by hand if you want to go slow, but if you need to go fast, you just pump it over it. And this thing is... Do you, even, do you even know, George, what is this rated for? How many times? 8,000. 8,000 pounds? It is now that that new hydraulic pump is in here. Yeah, Before yeah. Before it was only three. This is for five. Really? Eight, yeah. See, I would have thought even more. I have the original uh, pump for that, too. Yeah, and actually, it, it's got the same thing like on mine. No, it's 4,000 pounds fully, uh, fully extended. Okay. I mean, uh, fully... Retracted. Yeah, but I don't think the ram would have... This ram is much, pounds. much more heavier duty than the other ram. Yeah, but the, 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 the extra powerful ram is not going to do you much good if this thing goes like this. Right. Thing. So that's why you still get a kind of look at this, but it's just like mine where it's, they were, you know, you buy it and they say, oh, it's a 4,000 pound lift. But then when you get it home, it's like, yeah, it's 4,000 pounds if you have it short than here. I'm controlling the camera now for this guy. He's a superstar, YouTube superstar <laughs> right here. So, <laughs> but this, this thing, this thing's really cool. And this is George's grinder right here that he got. You got this for free? This was a no, freebie no, too? That wasn't no, freebie. That was, was $300, yeah. yeah. That was $300, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice one. Look, look at look this person. You can tell you're a, you can tell you're a radio guy. You're blocking the shot. I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm all old here. <laughs> Try to lift that thing. Go ahead. Not that. No, this. I'll break your thing. Go ahead. No, you won't lift it. It's not bolted to the floor either. How you like that? Oh yeah. I've got a pedestal like that under my grinder. Try to find one of these babbles if you can. It's an American-made babble. Yeah. Hey, okay. Mine's got so much paint on it. I don't know who makes it. I, it came. It came out of a. Uh, Connecticut State Prison. Nice. So when I bought it at auction, it had this huge cage thing over it because they had to be able to padlock it closed so that the uh, inmates couldn't use it unless they had permission and were supervised directly. Uh, and so they couldn't turn a, uh, a spoon or something from the mess hall into a lethal weapon. My local guy did not have any American bearings, so I got the best ones I could get from my... Yeah. So George is kind of a Kennedy toolbox hoarder too. He's got a riser and a box on top there. He's got another box there. He's got one of the small ones that I got. I got a few of over there. Actually, I just sold two of mine. Figured five was enough. And then he's got a little Craftsman one there. This was a free on Craigslist find. This big snap-on compressor. He had to do a lot of work to it, but now it's a it's a beast. Oh, I hear him yelling from the other room with excitement. I think he found that wiring harness. Not even opened. Where are you with that? Over here. Camera? Why? What's that? This is the harness. Oh, really? Jeez, yeah. big enough box, huh? It hasn't been opened. Open. Cool. Great. So, I'm, you put these? I'm taking a shot of that little outboard. Tell me about that little outboard again. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Why? I don't know. I'm here. It's because other people that make mistakes don't like other people. Yeah, I put it to, I rebuilt it. I put little rings on it. Uh, and it's another Johnson? No, it's a 50 horsepower Mercury. Okay, 1973. Okay, all right. I was going to say it's black. <clears throat> so I, oh, yeah, I see it right there. Yeah. And the reasoning that uh, Stevie does his videos is for the reason why I should be doing videos is because actually after about seven months, I forgot how to put it back together. To tell you the truth, I really did. I mean, I got all the parts and stuff. It doesn't look like it's a big deal. Yeah. But I just, just like, ugh, it's too much. Well, the great thing about YouTube is chances are you can find something messing with one of these models. Yeah, but the problem is, is their audio sucks, so I can't hear them. Well, all you need to is it's, see where they're hooking shit up. Uh, I, I got the manual. You know, it's just... Uh, yeah. I don't have anything to put it on anyway. I'll just put it on a bike. But for now, it's fine. I got the lower unit. I got another lower unit right over there, too. This can't be too old. 
So let me see. It's got the blue. Is it really? Blue. See that blue thing on the back of where the world is? Yeah. See that? That's how old that is. See that blue mercury? That's old, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's probably right. about the same one yours. Well, no, because it's got the individual uh, ignition coil packs here, which I thought they went to that later. But then again, my, my, my Merck's ancient. Um, and yeah, that's that lift back there is a behemoth of a beast lift, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did that come out of a factory or out yeah, of a car show? Like guys that don't want to put a, a, a lift in their garage, like mine, because my ceiling. You might be able to get away from it, but I don't have the joysticks like a lot of people do. Yeah. So that I just use to just put on the bumper and just wing goes right up. It's a beast. Well, I don't know if you guys can appreciate that thing, but that thing's quite the lift. Listen, you still got two engine stands to throw in the back of each truck. Hey, what's this thing over here? Portable soda? Oh, it's a it's a little sandblaster. Soda blaster. Yeah. And it works fantastic. I did the boat with it. I've done motors, carburetors with it. I had to do these carbs off this right here, this Honda right here. Yeah. They're, you couldn't even look at this. Dude. You couldn't even see them. They were completely black. Look how clean that is. That's from soda blasting. But you've got to wash it off a lot because if not, it gets all over the place. Gotcha. And do it outside. You can still see it's caked. Yeah, see yeah, yeah. See how stuff cakes on there? So you got to wash them. But man, it got all the crap out. You ever think you get one of them uh, cabinets? A little cabinet? No. No? Uh, you know that... I don't uh, the Harbor Freight one is is, is cheap, uh, but it leaks. Let me tell you another buy from Harbor Freight is this right here. You see this light? <clears throat> Three years ago, I bought that at Harbor Freight. Rechargeable. It's full, smashed, broke. Still fucking works. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that Cummins drill press. That's from a catalog company. That's I think now defunct. Yeah. Because like I was telling you when I got here, it I've got though. I've got the air thing there for it. It works great. But now that's like that. That's the kind of thing you would buy at a at a Harbor Freight for a drill press. Thanks, Steve. Where do you see the, the old Delta that I picked up for 25 bucks? That, right? No, no. Do you ever get the no, wood no. shaper fixed? I got stuff in the garage that I, I <laughs> hasn't even been on video Is yet. Your wood <laughs> the wood shaper? Yeah, I got it running. You know what I got to do now with I the wood shaper? This of you. I just picked up another one. This I this of you. I just bought another yeah, one I at the flea market. It's a good thing I did buy it. It is. I have to say that. I, I did buy that because you, so I was like, how are you getting that portable lighter on? I need that because I, yep. I only got these, you know? Well, the, the, the one I've had for years is on a separate pedestal. Yes. So it's like a floor well, lamp. That one is magnetic, ain't it? Uh, no, I just picked up one at the flea market this weekend that you can clamp onto the bench. So now I got two of them. So when you're not That's coming up on an up, upcoming flea so market fine. Come on out here, you can do a compression check on that Honda for me. <laughs> you should have told me. I could have brought put, I could have brought the kit with me. I got it. You got oh, you that know. crap. You got to get this kit right here, man. That's the kit. That looks just like the kit I have. It's Craftsman, American. Well, what's the one I have? I Some, forgot. For, Poland. No, no. <laughs> Poland. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here's my card. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's my card. <laughs> Like a salesman. Here's my, here's my card. ABS. You're looking for something? I got something. Maybe always be selling. Well, why are you selling your wedding? Hey, listen, get that camera over here. No, I'm looking at your gold wing. Point that camera over here. I'm going to help all your subscribers. Yeah? See oh, this, yeah, yeah. See this right here? Yes. This is going to help all the subscribers for Steve's channel because his audio sometimes doesn't work that well. Right. But it will from now on. Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, <laughs> but well. anyway, it's a lavalier Bleep. <laughs> it's a lavalier microphone, so you'll always hear him when he's out there running loud right. stuff and you can't hear him. I just got to figure out how to hack my camera so he's I can plug that oh, into I it. I tried that. It's not easy. Mm. No. no. It's not easy. They do it on purpose so they pay for it. <laughs> if you get a GoPro, yep. you, don't, you don't have to. You could just uh, plug it to the audio in. Where'd you get the old cast iron cook stove? Uh, Craigslist. Uh, 50 bucks. My wife will redo that. Like no, my wife sanded that whole boat on her back. No that kidding. Boat, that greedy white out there. Yeah, the yeah. With a mouse. The, I retired it. It was up on the wall. The mouse sander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did the whole boat with that. No kidding. So she redoes that stuff. Now, that's just one of the projects that she'll do this winter. Yeah, and you can put that in your house here. Either that or she'll sell it. Yeah. Yeah, I use that wood burner stove back there in here. That's kind of a cool stove. When it gets cranking in here, because once January comes, it's hard to do projects, man. And I'm not here to keep it on all the time. So yep. it's like I have to start all over. You ever go to the Brimfield flea market? No. Brimfield, Massachusetts? 
there were used, I don't know if he's still there. Far. Used to be a guy who would come there and set up every year, and he'd have just a whole tent full of these stoves completely. He restored. unloads every one of them. Well, that's the thing. Hey, I got something else. When you me. mean unload, unload as in he's removes them uh, from his vehicle, or hey, unload as in I'm sells. Use this, so here's another gift. Here's another gift for you. Oh, look at this! Look at this! Happy Merry Christmas. I like the I like the stand. There you go. Yeah, take that with you. Nice. I'm never gonna use it. I'm not. I'm the lady's days are over. Oh, it's, it's a Mitotoyo. Oh, it's it's not it's not. Cheap. As Mr. Pete would say, Mitotoyo. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a nice one right there. <laughs> it is. Now you can see how out of round your shaft is on your, <laughs> on your motor after we banged it in this truck There's five times. Plenty out of round about me. Trust Here's me. A, yeah, yeah, good <laughs> He'll find out where that goes, folks. I'm telling you now. <laughs> he will find out where that goes on those two motors. <laughs> Jesus. Look, somebody did compression check on here. 95, 95, 95. See? Oh. I don't know when. Oh, well, that's good. But see, the Japanese also label all your bolts, so you don't have to look at that. Look at this one oh, yeah, in yeah. order. Oh, yeah. I mean, they do a good job. Tightening pattern. I also noticed the thing they do. Look at that. Torque specs. Yep. Cast right on the casting. Yep. I saw them on the yep. side cover, KG. too. KG. You got a torque you wrench that does KGF? Yeah, I got a I got a Crapsman. Oh, uh, got, digital? Uh, yeah, I can do both. No, it's it's a it's I a manual. I got the digital one. one that does that. It's pretty cool. But you, you, this motor should not take you much to get running because of the fact that it's just a burnt up wiring harness, and you you're very proficient at reading wire schematics, and they're in that manual. Cool. So the brand new thing is inside here. I know you know what? If you don't have this going by Christmas, I'll be very disappointed. Oh no 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 no. no. <laughs> My biggest problem is right now, this is going to have to be a spring project only because I can't get this down the basement. Well, see, you don't have to worry about this because you put them on here and you put a cover over them, you just leave them. That's what I'm going to do. you getting at them, you get at them. There's no rush on here. I hear you. So these are the stands that George made for these things. Yeah, they do their job. They're really not good. Don't, don't be analyzing the construction. And they, they got the uh, fact that they work. Oh, that one's only got cheap little casters on it. That holds all that weight, huh? Yeah. yeah. See, I noticed on this one here, it looks like oh, you, you started with a dolly that had these yeah. kick-ass casters on it, and then you just bolted all that stuff onto Listen, it. Listen, two, 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 four, six, eight. That's enough. That's 801. This is 800. That's 801. <laughs> we do things. We're frugal. <laughs> and the gate actually closes. I didn't get any of that. <laughs> what were you saying? That's an industrial 55 Evinrude. That's why it's got the green. Somebody tried to paint it blue, but it's supposed to have heavier duty shit in it. And no kidding. Believe me, it's heavy duty. You can't even get that, that exhaust unit off that body no matter what you do. Industrial outboard. What's yeah. that little itty bitty one there? That looks like a Johnson. Johnson. 75. Yeah. 88. First, first one I ever fixed was like a 60 something Johnson. You know what the problem is with those are? Needle bearings. That's oh, yeah? the problem. Uh -huh. You know how they got the, the bearings that are in a cup? Yeah. These are needles. You got to lay them in one by one by one by one. Oh, <laughs> or the kind where you take the shaft out and all the needles just fall out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Or they break and they get caught between the piston ring and the, and the cylinder. Oh, wall. wonderful! That's how that. That's what happened to that. Believe it or not, it didn't score the inside of it though. So this is the boat you rebuilt. Yeah, that's a 22 foot Grady White. 22 foot Grady White. Since since my audio is so bad. Yeah, with a, with a 1983 with a, with a 1988 200 horsepower Black Max Mercury on it. It's set up. It's got radar. Um, you name it. I redid the whole thing. This is yeah. the boat that my wife laid on her back and, and sanded the whole thing. We repainted the whole boat. It was pretty much a little mess. Here's the beauty. This is a beauty. And this is called a Black Max. It is. Oh yeah, it says right on there, Black Max. Yeah, now, two stroke. Do you do you trust the oil injection on this? Yes. Or, you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I like I was reading online, a lot of guys, even the motors with oil injection, they'll disable it and they'll just pre-mix because they don't trust. I don't know why they would disable it unless it's not working. Well, it's well, a, they just don't trust well, it. Well, they don't trust it. They 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 worry that if it fails, it's going to kill the engine. But then you know you read about other guys will say that gee that 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 some. That's such a rarity that that happens. It is such a rarity that it happens. And you can monitor it, too. You know, you, everything on these, these motors is wide open. You can actually see that oil. Is that a stainless prop? Yes. That must be some bucks for that sucker, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, I told you I had a bitch of a time. This is a whole... This whole thing is an extension, okay? Okay. This boat originally came set up for two outboard motors. Okay. Somebody overdid it took them off and put one on. 
Yeah. And when they put it on, they put a 20 inch shaft on instead of a 25. The two outboards were 25s. Yeah. So they didn't know what they were doing. And the guy was driving it back in a storm out in the harbor in mass and just kept goosing it. And it was just revving out. And he burnt it. I never saw a piston melted so much. That's the one in the garage. That's because he was cavitating. Gotcha. I never knew anything about cavitation. So I went out and got the same motor thinking the guy just blew it up until it started with me. I knew better to de-throttle and say something's really wrong here. Right, right. And after taking it apart three or four times and realized everything was good, yeah. uh, a professional marine mechanic took it off the ramp, out of the water, within four seconds told me, your shaft's too short. No kidding. So I said, well, what do you do? He goes, you got to buy a new motor with a new shaft. Or a so new this shaft. had twin outboards on it originally? Yeah. Wow. That must have been a tight fit, huh? Yeah. I mean, like those two 150s right there we just put in the truck. I don't even think they'd fit on this that thing. That goes are much bigger than these. You can put two of these on. You could? Yeah. So, I, he said, buy a new motor or get an extension. I'm like, I don't even know where to begin on that repair job. So, and they're like $1,000, $1,100, $1,200. Well, searching the country, I was able to get the whole setup for about 380 Each piece came from a different area. Yeah. This is an extension right here. Okay, I see it now, yeah. That's an extension. Oh, yeah, yeah. And everything inside has to be extended to the same length. Oh, so the drive shaft's the too drive, short. You have, to buy, you have to get a new drive shaft. You have to get the new... Oh, so you change the drive shaft and the gear case to a longer one. Just the drive shaft. Yeah. Okay? And the copper water explosion. The tubes tube. and all that. Yeah. So, I get it. I put it all together, and I start the motor up, and I'm noticing my temperature gauge is at um, higher than it normally is. And I let it run for an hour in the driveway. I said, well, maybe it's because of this new extension shit. So I take it out on the river, no less than 15 seconds, it almost overheated. I shut it right down. Yeah. Uh, and I get towed back from sea tow. It was a nightmare. And when I got it back and pulled it apart and did measurements like you do, I was an eighth of an inch short on the copper tube pipe going oh. to the water pump. So the water wasn't going it, anywhere. No, it was coming off to the side and Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was feeding go, a little bit, but not enough. Right, so I had to go find a copper tube, cut it half inch yeah. to the exact thing, put it back on, haven't had a problem. But then, of course, I put it all back together Go back out in the water, and all of a sudden, wow, it's winding out like that same problem before. You know what I did? I forgot to tighten the fucking bolt for the... <laughs> so I had to get towed back again. So it was spinning on the hub. It was just spinning on the hub. <laughs> wow. But now, now it's fine. And once I got it running, and I got videotapes of it doing 50 miles an hour. Yeah. I haven't run it since. <laughs> now, I'm noticing you've got this plate on the back of your transom yeah, there. Yeah, I didn't put that on there. Somebody else did for reinforcement. Okay. But it is not rotted underneath. So it's solid, but they just wanted it even yes, more solid. Exactly. So what do you think that is? Stainless? Yes, it definitely is. It does. It's not aluminum. Okay. Because look at the welds on there. Yeah, what I see that. What kind of welds are those? Wow. Well, are those TIG or MIGs? I mean, that could be a TIG. Uh, and if it that's what then that that would be aluminum if it was TIG, I would think, right? That's. Not, I don't think that's TIG. Look how deep that fucking weld is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, it's sturdy enough that when you goose that thing, this bucket ain't buckling. Because that's the worst thing about buying boats is you you find you know you find out is that some of the wood might be rotted. Well, yeah, so, well, that's like not. that's like everybody's telling me right now that that they're predicting that, that I'm going right to rip there, the transom off that mine. That center gas tank cover. Yeah. I just redid all that myself. We cut it out of uh, you know ha uh, three quarter inch maple, yeah. and then I refibered the whole thing with Get, fiberglass on it. I'm getting a close up of the ice so everybody in yeah. the warmer part of the country can appreciate. I know it's unbelievable, appreciate. and it'll be like this till March. So that was really spongy, but I redid that and, and the joists is underneath it. But other than that, man, it's been a damn good boat for just about nothing. Yeah. Um, we take it out all the time in the ocean. I don't take it in the lake. Where do you go? Where do you like uh, to go? I like to go out, you know, right out of where, where Newbury Port is. Yeah. Those two things are. You go out to the ocean that way. You go for stripers, blues, well, what? Actually, I was uh, I was doing it for lobster for a little bit until somebody stole my traps. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So then I just said, just go out for cruising now, you know? All right. Now tell us about that beast. That thing's... Look at the size of it. I mean, I'd take up it if we had time. It's got. A, it's got. A, it's. Well, look. Don't don't be fooled. There are. There's stands in there to make the shrink wrap wide. Okay. Great. Yeah. And it's a ten foot beam. Don't but that's be that's what a twenty five footer. Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Wow. With a ten foot beam. And it has a 454 Ford in it, but it's got a living room inside of it. I was just going to say. Two helms. That, you kidding me? I could live in that boat when my wife throws me out. You will have to throw this because you're fucking projects the way you are. <laughs> you can see back here, you got a helm up top there. See it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there's one at the bottom. Oh, yeah, cool. And it's in fantastic so shape. So you get your, your, uh, your fair just, weather helm there and your... Uh, yeah. 
And uh, yes, do we want to get it in the water? Absolutely, maybe next year. The thing about this is you can't trailer it. Your dual, you would have a hard time carrying this. I yes, believe this it. This is a very rare, instead of having, and I gotta fucking find out. See that, that spins, that's a good sign, buddy. That's a real good sign. Yeah. Oh yeah, don't sound good, but it's no, good. No, no. Um, so Pen Yan was made in Pen Yan, New York. It's an American-made handcrafted boat. Okay. That's what this is. Uh, and instead of having a, an outboard motor push it, okay, like like you would with your other ones, this makes the boat go even with it. That's what the whole design was. Have I tried okay. that yet? But people that talk about it rave about it. So is that brass? That uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, th this looks a lot like the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, uh, Keith Fenner there works on. Because you know, he's out on the Cape. He's a monster. Yeah, he's stuff he's able to do. I'm definitely not as proficient as that guy. I never will be. It's not my trade. Yeah. Uh, but I do appreciate what he does do. You can learn a lot. And, yeah. But um, I mean, like straightening those shafts. Yeah. Stuff like that. But I mean, for what I want to do. But see, the thing is, you got to keep it in the water. That means you're going to have to pay a marina roll here. And yeah. Like $100, $110 a foot length over roll for the season. No kidding. Oh, yeah. That's what they charge. Wow. And this paint's not bad. This is oxidized and green. I can power wash that. Okay, look yep. at that. Come right back to the blue. Oh, yeah. So this algae right here is actually saving that paint. Right. There are no cracks in it, and that's why I got it. And what's this got for a motor in it? It's a Ford 454 cubic inch right in the middle of it. It's a big, massive V8. No kidding. Yeah. That'll gobble some gas, huh? Yeah, I would think so. Especially with the prices of gas at the marinas. Yeah, it's definitely not that bad. But it, it's still up there. So if I just cover up some of this, uh, these holes just to get the weather, this can stay for as long as it wants. It's, it's sealed. And yeah. I'll get to it when I get to it. Now that you just took two major projects off my hands, <laughs> I can probably get to this one. Yeah. It's fun, though. You know, I wish I was, you were closer. We, you know, it would help yep. you out. But. So you can't, you, can't pull the, uh, you can't pull the motor out of this with... Yes, you could. You have to get a, a gantry. Right, you have to like. Have to have a big game. Right, right. Yeah. But I might not have to. Okay, the guy winterized. I got to take the. Oh, that's right. The you you were saying that. Turn it around and the motor might be fine in yeah. this thing. So <laughs> I this saw is. It. it looks good. So with the hull and everything in good shape. So I mean, what do you really need to do to this thing? Get it running. And then you want to do the inside. I want to put yep. new carpet in. And then and then after that, it's well. I'm going to. I'm going to. I got a condo down at Head Island, South Carolina. Okay. So, you know. Boat, you don't, you, well, you like boating. Boating's great, man. There's nothing like Yeah. What year is this? Good, nice sound. Training it for a, for a, for a boat. Yeah, day, right, right. All day. <laughs> so you bought the boat for two hundred. Yeah. You fixed the boat up. Yeah. You put the boat on Craigslist, yeah. and you traded straight up for this bike. Straight up. And this bike needed nothing when you got it. Nope. Wow. I haven't done anything to it either. Yeah. So I I was rolling the camera when we were talking yeah. about. It. Tell PC, me about the Honda. Uh, PC eight hundred, nineteen ninety nine. Sat outside for like six years. Never ran. Completely. I was pulling dead rodent bodies out of the back of it. <clears throat> took the cobs off. I had to do it three times, though. And you didn't paint that? No. Nope. That's a factory paint? Yes. And it was sitting outside all yeah, that time? Yeah, under cover. Huh. Under cover. Uh, beautiful bike. It's an 800cc. Yeah. People think it's a scooter. And it's just very quiet and drives well. And then I redid the whole thing on that 250 Rebel over there. No, I, I wouldn't have thought it was a scooter. It looks too big to be a scooter. I actually thought it was a Gold Wing because I don't know yeah. Gold Wings and that And that's the 81 Gold Wing that I got for nothing that I've been... Well, we'll see how we do with that. Mm -hmm. I mean... She was sick when I got it, and the carbs and all this other shit, we'll see. I'm afraid to check the compression, to tell you the truth, because I don't know. I don't want to take that out. That was a cool look at Honda is the Valkyrie. Big bike. Yeah. Six cylinder, I think. Yeah. Six cylinder. You know what the problem is with these bigger bikes is the insurance. They start killing you on insurance when you start. I yeah. don't know about that. That's not true. Oh, well, you're in New Hampshire. Maybe it's different. Oh, yeah. Massachusetts. Oh, we yeah. Get yeah. You're right. Massachusetts, the higher the CCs, the more you're going to pay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, didn't know I think there's a cutoff. Like, you, once you get above a certain amount and... They only have, like, $25 a month, man. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. And you, get, you stop them in, like, November. You don't do, take it up again until, like, March. Yeah. 
Oh, don't even what? get me started. I you wouldn't, want to be you wouldn't believe what it cost me to, to register that truck. I'll tell you what I have an issue. Okay, I, I, I'm going to tell you what. I rebuilt. The brakes were completely seized up, okay? Yeah. So I rebuilt the, the back master cylinder that's underneath here. And, okay. And, and that works great now. But the fronts, I've taken them apart four times, but knew this stuff, everything. I can pump this all day. They will not get hard. No kidding. And those, I redid those three times down there on both calipers. I don't give a shit what you do. They will not get hard. I, 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 I'm t and I rebuilt the inside of these guts twice. Huh. And if I take those off and I blow air, those pistons come right out. I am stumped to the max on that. I mean, I'll keep continue to work on it. Right. But man, is it aggravating the shit out of me. I'll fill it up three, four times. This is brand new. And the motor, you're just, you're just rebuilding the carbs? Yeah, I, I, because I sp sprayed ether down it and it started to run. Okay. And was spitting out all sorts of shit and sounding really horrid. This uh, was sitting for a long time too then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, the guy says, oh, it was running last year. I call up. I said, you're full of shit. And about 10. <laughs> because when I opened up those carbs, this, this garage smelled like varnish for two weeks. Hey, George, maybe he just lost track of which, how many bikes yeah, he had, like yeah, you. Sure. Well, 74,000 miles on <laughs> You got the, what do you got? We got the Gull Wing. You got the Rebel over there on the other side. You get the Pacifica and you get the Vulcan. That's that's four. Oh well, all right. Then you have a lot more outboys than you do bikes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well now I got rid of two. Oh, well, that's true, right? I had three. I had four, and there's the dead one there. Yeah, yeah. But that, like you said, that's a good parts motor for the one that you're running it's on your boat. Because it's the same exact motor. Right. I mean, it's, and I haven't had to take too many parts off of it. Did you Did you get yourself a ring? A work. lifting ring. Oh, for the Mercury. Did you finally get the lifting ring? For the Mercury? Yeah. I made one. Oh, yeah. that's right. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were an animal. That was my first threading ever. Yes, that's a good <laughs> job. Good job, man. Got lucky. Ah, <laughs> Got lucky. That's it. Yep, yep. Lifting ring. Well, I just left the home of award-winning radio host uh, George Russell. And... Uh, couldn't get over how generous George was and uh, what a great guy. And uh, never did actually log the mileage when I got there, but I haven't gone very far since then. So it's about 75 mile drive and uh, it was well worth it. Um, I'm gonna have some fun working on these motors. I have no idea whether or not I'm gonna have success on any of them, either one of them, but I'd like to think I will. But uh, he gave me a brand new uh, in the box wiring harness and uh, the service manual. So, boy, I'll tell you, I don't have too many excuses not to get one of these running, other than, of course, time. Uh, but it's 12:40, and I got to get going back to uh, back to home. But I'm hungry, so I decided to stop. I was going to get something quick at you know Mickey D's or BK, but um, I happened to find this place called Pano's Roast Beef right here near George's neck of the woods. So, Pano's roast beef. Hope it's good. So I was just gonna get the uh, roast beef sandwich, uh, which they have three sizes of, and then I saw they had the roast beef dinner, which is a combo that comes with onion rings, french fries, and, uh, and the sandwich, and uh, coleslaw. And look at this. This whole thing is just the french fries and the onion rings. There's a huge amount of food here. <laughs> so, uh, this uh, woman working over here obviously doesn't realize that I was trying to diet a little bit before the holidays. Hmm. Boy, even the coleslaw helping. Uh, that's a little, like, little, little bitty cup for drinking, but that's uh, huge as far as coleslaw. And usually when you get a side of coleslaw to go, it's in a little cup about, well, not quite the diameter of that, and only about that tall. This is a, <laughs> that's a lot of coleslaw. <laughs> and you got the sandwich here. The uh, fries and those, uh, those fries and onion rings are good. They dropped those in right when I went in there, so apparently they cook them to order. So they're a little too hot for me to eat right now, so I'll switch to the sandwich. She asked me what I wanted for toppings. I asked if they had a horseradish sauce because a lot of places have a horseradish sauce that they make. She said, oh, no, we have uh, just straight horseradish. I was like, oh, yeah, all right, I can handle that. <laughs> so she put a little bit of mayo on there too at uh, at her recommendation. I decided to opt. So usually when you get a horseradish sauce, it's a combo of mayo and horseradish. 
Mm, this roast beef looks good. Oh yeah, good stuff. Oh yeah, that's real horseradish on there. The good stuff. Yep, this is definitely a home run. I would uh, highly recommend Panos Roast Beef if you're in the area. Hudson, New Hampshire.